Hey y'all, my name is Miriam and today we are chatting all about proportions. One of the biggest questions I get asked when I post my art is how do you get your proportions accurate without sketching anything out first? So today I'm going to share all of my tried and true methods with you. I'll show you how to eyeball your proportions in real time without the use of things like grids or tracing. We'll also talk about exercises you can do to develop a keen eye for detail and perception. So grab your paintbrushes and let's get started. To begin, let's divide the conversation of proportions into two different camps, working from imagination and working from life or from reference. The process for getting accurate proportions for each of these is different, so we're gonna approach them in separate conversations. Today, we're just gonna be talking about how to get accurate proportions when working from life or from reference. Let me first demystify a few things about proportions. Number one, they don't matter nearly as much as you might think that they do. Let's think back at our last video. My proportions were accurate in the first version of this painting, but that didn't matter nearly as much as my application of form and my use of color. Now, yes, don't get me wrong, proportions are important when it comes to realism, but just remember, they don't tell the whole story. I spent way too much time early on in my journey focusing on the canonical rules of form and not enough time observing from life and focusing on how the form works in space. This view of proportions that we traditionally see is helpful to know, but it often reinforces this flat, two-dimensional kind of thinking that leaves us frustrated when we try to draw the face from any other angle that isn't dead on or completely to the side. Likewise, some of the most renowned artists out there and historically famous artists have some really wonky proportions in their paintings. And you know what? no one really notices. Or if they do notice, they don't care. Faces are so diverse. Majority of the time, no one's gonna know if you're a millimeter off in your proportions or if your eye is just a tiny bit too far over. Over the past few years, I've painted myself hundreds of times and in every single one, my proportions are different. And you know what? No one cares. I say this because I don't want you guys to beat yourselves up over your proportions or think you need to achieve this level of perfectionism. I used to think that if I could just get my proportions right, my paintings and my drawings would all be magically beautiful and um, I could stop stressing over the level of my art. But it's better to take a holistic approach and realize that proportions are just one part of it. All right, now that my disclaimer is over, let's get back to business. Speaking of self-portraits, let's pull back up that last video. The first set of methods we're going to talk about are all about using your eyes only to work from a reference without the use of aids or tools. What methods you choose to use will depend on what you want from your art. For me, the process of creation and my personal relationship with the art is just as important as the end product itself. For me, painting is a cathartic experience, one that feels freeing and stress relieving and exploratory all at once, and I want my process to match that feeling. For others, the only thing that might be important to them is the final outcome of the art, not the manner of which it was created. Now, let me be totally clear. Both ways are totally valid. They may just lead you down different paths of creation. If the only thing that matters to you is the final outcome of the painting, then you may be better served skipping this video, investing in a good projector, and calling it a day. It also doesn't have to be one or the other. I weave in and out of methods throughout my paintings. You'll find what methods work well for you and what fills your artistic cup. Okay, enough of my ramblings, let's get started. Method one, sight size method. This is the method I'm using in this video here. The goal of sight size is to accurately capture the subject by comparing it directly to the reference, ensuring that the visual information is transferred as accurately as possible. In sight size, the artist sets up the canvas and the subject at a distance where both can be viewed simultaneously with a one-to-one -one scale. This method is best for when you're wanting to copy your reference as accurately as possible. The beauty of sight size is in its simplicity and directness. You're not just copying, you're training your eyes to see shapes, values, edges, and proportions on a very precise level. This is an invaluable skill, probably the most valuable skill you can have as an artist. I think it would be a disservice to have a conversation about proportions without talking about how to train your eyes to see. That's what Sci-Sci's method is all about, training to see like an artist. 
Now, you don't have to do it live or paint yourself like I am in this video. This is just a fun little challenge that I like to do. Challenge, torture, whatever you want to call it. You can do this with a picture from life or with inanimate objects like this. When it comes down to it, getting accurate proportions in your paintings is really just about understanding relationships. Relationships between distance, color, shape, and value. The sight side method is like a superhero of an exercise because it helps train your eyes to see the relationships between all four of those all at once. If you haven't used the sight size method before, go pull out your paintbrush and start painting. Once you get the hang of it, it feels like gaining a superpower. It's fun and challenging and honestly, nothing's ever trained my eyes better. I used to get so frustrated when I first started out because I would watch videos of artists painting and I would think to myself, how did they know to put the eye there and not here or here or here or here? And it boggled my mind. I thought they were doing magic. What I didn't realize at the time was that these artists weren't doing magic, they were doing math. They were performing calculations and doing measurements in their head to get accurate proportions. Now, I know I'm not the only one that's been boggled by this before. I know because I get questions about it all the time. In fact, here's a question I just got this morning. Am I measuring or am I eyeballing it? The answer is both. I'm using my eyeballs to measure and calculate the entire time. Now, I know that can sound intimidating at first, but let me show you how easy it can be. It all starts with the setup. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when working from a reference is set up your reference to be the same dimensions as your canvas. It's so simple, but let's look at what a difference it makes. Let's say I'm gonna work with this portrait here. My dimensions don't match my canvas. I have to do a lot more work to figure out where all of my features and elements of my portrait are going to end up, and I can only rely on the information within the bounds of my outline. But when I cut my reference to the same dimensions as my canvas, I've now opened up a whole new avenue of measurement for myself. Not only can I use the information within the outline, but I can now use the canvas edges and the negative space around it as a guide, making it much easier to place everything right where it needs to be. It's a simple trick, but it cuts down a lot of the guesswork and helps me lay out my painting quickly and accurately. For me, this is always the first step. I use the bounds of the canvas and the negative space to quickly get the silhouette in and mark out the general placements of my main features. Let's look at this reference photo for a second. It's hard for me mentally to think about accurately getting down the complicated shape of the human form, but it's much easier for me to just think about replicating this shape. If my reference photo didn't match the canvas, then I wouldn't be able to use this shape as a point of reference. Hopefully that makes sense. It can be challenging for me to determine exactly where all of the features should be positioned on my canvas, but when the ratios match, it's easier for me to verify my placements. Here's a little trick I use. Let's say I wanna figure out where the eye goes. I mentally draw a line up and over to get a box. Then I think about that box on my canvas. Wherever the corner is, that's where I'll place my eye. The stage is all about approximation, so don't get too caught up about accuracy yet. Setting up your reference to be the same dimensions as your canvas also makes things like comparative measurement a lot easier. I'm doing all of this stuff in my head as I go through the beginning stages of my portrait. It sounds intimidating, but the more you do it, the more it becomes second nature and you don't even realize that you're doing it after a while. The second thing that you're gonna wanna note when working from a reference image is you're gonna want your reference to be at the same viewing angle as your canvas, ideally perpendicular. Now, when I'm working, I work at an upright angle with my reference right next to my canvas at the same viewing angle. This ensures that I'm not dealing with any distortion of my viewing angles as I go through my portrait. Next, let's talk about establishing a fixed point or anchor in your portrait. I like to call this the point of truth. This could be the corner of an eye, the tip of a nose, the edge of the mouth, top of the head, bottom of the chin, whatever. This anchor serves as your constant, a point from which you can measure and compare all other aspects of your subject. As you work, you'll constantly refer back to this point, adjusting and realigning everything else in relation to the anchor point. It's like having a compass while out at sea. No matter where you go, you have a point that always guides you back. For me, I often pick the nose or the corner of the eye. It's fairly central and I can easily compare it to all other features. Once I've marked the general placement of the silhouette and features, I can use that point of truth to check it against the other features horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. 
Let's take a look at this example. I've matched the dimensions of my reference to my canvas and used the information to block in a general silhouette. I've also made indications of where my features will go. This is step one, simple and general. Step two, I make my best guess of where my features will go and pick a point of truth. I pick the corner of the right eye. Like I said, we can use this to check against horizontals, verticals, and diagonals. So let's do it. If I draw a line straight down from my anchor point, I can inspect the relationship with everything else it touches. In my drawing, it touches the nose and is on the right side of the mouth. But in my reference, I can see that the nose should be to the left of the anchor point and that the mouth should be a good bit to the right of it. Same thing with the diagonals. I can check the anchor point against other placements and see how I need to adjust. When it comes to measuring angles, there's a few ways you can do this. I do it in my head now by sight, but I struggled with this a lot in the beginning. I used to think of the angles like a clock and would assign times to it like a minute hand. I'd think in my head, my minute hand is at 1235, but really it should be closer to 1240. The other thing you can do, and I'll still do this for tricky measurements, is just use your paintbrush to measure the angle. This is why you often see artists doing this with their brushes. As long as you don't move your wrist when you move between reference and canvas, you can get a pretty good approximation of the angle. Once I feel good about my features in relation to my anchor point and I'm confident about my new placements, I can then use those features now to create secondary points to measure off of. This approach is nice because it breaks down the daunting task of capturing the whole subject into manageable relative comparisons. When I'm using this method, I'm going for likeness. I'm not trying to achieve photorealism. This is why my work often starts out general and messy, and as I get further into the process, it slowly becomes more refined. I'm just constantly comparing different distances and relationships between points in my portrait. Now, before I get too far into this, let me answer the question right now. Why don't I sketch everything out first and then just paint it in? Well, it goes back to what we talked about before. This fills my artistic cup. I pursue freshness and chaos in my work, and this method allows me to build that up organically. It's not manufactured or added after the fact. It's also just really fun getting to walk up to a blank canvas with nothing but your brush and paint and walking away with something like that. All right, back to talking about proportions. Now, using anchor points and calculating distances is great for figuring out the placement of your features, but it doesn't really help with figuring out the shape of your features. For that, I like to think about gravity. All right, stick with me here. Once I have my anchor points in and I figured out where the features will go, I mentally picture either a marble or a balloon. And I think to myself, what happens when I let go of them? There's two things I'm thinking of, speed and landing point. If I drop a marble on the bottom eyelid of my reference, it'll land here. I can use this as a reference point. If I let a balloon go on the top of the eye, it'll land here. I can look at the relationship between those two points and clearly see in my drawing that the relationship is off and I need to adjust the placement of my low and high points. I can also look at the speed and path of how the marble or balloon would travel. If I drop my balloon here, it would move up at a consistent speed, but then here it would speed up a little bit before slowing down and landing. I can see that I'm missing that change of speed right here in my initial drawing, so I'd want to adjust that. I do this all over the face. Look at the right side of the cheek and jawline. I think about the shape a marble would make if it traveled down my cheek and how it doesn't quite match up with the shape I've actually drawn. Some of the stuff feels weird to say out loud, but it's truly what's going on in my head as I'm painting. These methods make up the bulk of my work, and I know it can sound daunting at first doing this all in your head and trying to get it accurate, but don't worry, there's tools and aids that you can use to help you. Now, the more you do this and the more you use these tools, the less you'll need them and the more you'll start to do it just in your head on your own. So let's talk about some of those tools right now. One of the simplest tools that I own for gaining accurate proportions in your portraits is this. It's a proportional divider. Now, this is a really big one, but I own them in multiple sizes. And if you look at my earlier, early videos that I used to post online, you'll see me pull this out often. I haven't needed to use it in a really long time, but it used to be really hard for me to do comparative measurements in my head. And this tool helps with that. The beauty of it is in its simplicity. 
I can use it to measure and check for equivalent lengths in my reference image and then double check that against my portrait to make sure that I have the same equivalent lengths there too. I've also been a big fan of a simple ruler in the past for measuring comparative distances. Now, since we're talking about drawing tools and aids right now, I wanna go back to my video about how to learn art. I wanna encourage you to use your drawing tools and any sort of digital aids that you might have as a means for improvement and learning, not as a replacement for the work itself. It's the only way you'll train your eye to get better. Do the work yourself first and then use your tools to help check over the work. It can provide really valuable feedback for the self-taught artist. Just don't fall in the trap where you let the work, you let the tools, you let projectors, the digital aids do the work for you. Once you feel comfortable doing this on your own, you might find that the use of tools and optical aids help speed up your process. And you'll find that lots of artists do this. It all just depends on what you want from your art. When it comes to working from a reference or even from life, optical aids are nothing new and have been used by artists for a really long time. Artists have been using projection tools like the camera Lucida since the early 1800s, and David Hockney, as well as others, have accused many of the masters, including Caravaggio, of using even earlier forms of projection devices. I often find projectors tedious to set up and prone to distortion unless they're set up absolutely perfectly. Plus, I hate feeling like I'm coloring in the lines but that doesn't mean that I don't own a projector or will pull it out from time to time, especially when working with a difficult composition. Oftentimes when working with hands or fingers, I'll pull a copy of my finished painting into Photoshop, overlay my reference on it, and just check for any glaring mistakes before moving on. I wanted to mention this to you guys because it can be really easy to compare yourself to other artists that you see on social media and not realize what tools they may be using in between shots or before the camera even starts rolling. Talking about these kinds of things can be taboo in the art world. And so a lot of artists feel like they need to conceal it. That's why comparing yourself to artists that you see on social media never ends well and is usually not what it seems on the outside. Okay, enough of that. Another simple way that I check for errors in my work is by reversing the image or looking at it in a mirror. Sometimes we become blind to our proportions in our paintings and just the act of reversing it or simply stepping away is enough to point it out. When dealing with realism, remember proportions are important, but they're not everything. Form and color and value play a huge role. Now, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. And if you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a member either here or joining my Patreon. These videos wouldn't be possible without people like you. So thanks for watching and happy painting. Bye.